welcome back with another tutorial. And today we are looking at the basics of Adobe Premiere. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a commercial in this case. It's going to be an Audi commercial. And um, in the week four tutorial folder, you will find all the files that you're going to need for this. Um, let me just go through them really quick. We've got an Audi logo, we've got some music, we've got some raw footage clips. You can see they're all really professionally shot. We got some sound effects, pretty loud. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put this all into a commercial in this case, uh, using these clips in a certain order. I'm going to show you the basics of the program in the uh, at the same time. So. Let's go and launch Premiere. I'm just going to go up to the top right corner of the search bar and I'm just going to look for it, Premiere Pro 2020. And we're just going to wait for that to load. This is the icon for the program. And you're going to notice that uh, when it loads up, you're going to see that it's going to look something like this. All right. And you can see that it's going to want to because it's our first time loading it up, it's gonna to try to teach us a little bit about it. We can just skip that, close it, and we are going to learn how to use it by actually using it. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna look at is new project. We're gonna create a new project, and we're gonna give this a name. And I'm just gonna call this Audi. And I'm going to have to tell it where to save the file and um, all the assets as well, it basically, stores everything in a folder. It's a little different than other uh, Adobe programs. So we're gonna go to browse and I'm just gonna use, hit my desktop and I'm gonna make a new folder from the bottom left here. I'm just gonna call it Audi. Create. Okay. And I'm gonna choose it. Now we've got the name of the project and the location and we're gonna hit okay. And now Premiere will launch into the window where we can see um, the actual working space within Premiere. I'm gonna close this little thing on the side here. It's, uh, just by clicking these three little lines, I'm gonna close that panel because it's just taking up space. And also along the top, you'll notice all these tabs for the type of editing that we're doing. I'm gonna actually go to Effects. And you'll notice that when you do that, the display changes slightly. Uh, we now have this Effects panel over on the right hand side. We're going to need that. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the panels that are over on this side. So we've got four main panels starting in the bottom left corner. This is where all of your media that you're going to use, all your assets that you're going to use to build your project are located. This is your timeline. This is where the sequence of events are going to happen. You can control the amount of time that it takes for them to happen. This is your preview of the video that you're creating. And up here is your information window. All right, and this is very important because we're gonna use this part of the window to make all the changes that are gonna happen in the actual video itself. All right, so first step that we are going to do is I'm just gonna move Premiere over a little bit here and I'm going to go to my folder and I'm going to open up my raw footage folder. And you're gonna see inside there all of these clips. I want to select them all. I'm just clicking and dragging, or I can press Command A to select them all, and I'm going to drag them and drop them to the bottom left corner of Premiere. And what that's going to do is it's going to import all of those assets into Premiere in our project folder over here that it's basically holding them all in. Now you notice this can scroll and we have a couple different options. We can stay in icon view. We could switch to freeform view, which gives us even bigger of a sort of preview of the clip. Or we can switch to list view, which just gives us the names, which is the way I kind of like to work. So I'm gonna leave it in list view. It's a little easier for me to find the files as well. All right, so now we're ready to start um, actually creating this commercial. And so what we're gonna do first, just so I can show you how this sort of works, we're going to just take the first clip, it's called Audi Back, and I just clicked it and I'm going to drag it over to the timeline. And what's going to happen as soon as you do that, you'll see that the timeline changes quite a bit. 
Um, you'll notice now that we can see the clip. It's right here. It's this purple um, timeline or uh, purple clip that is taking up time. You can see how long it is up here. You can see on the timeline up here how long, how much time it's taking. You can see that it was added to video one, V1, that channel. And you notice that you can keep stacking up video channels. Okay, you can have tons of video channels one, stacked up on, each, you know, one on another. And down below we have the audio channels. All right, because this only has video, we have it sitting right now in video one. Um, one thing that's important to mention right away is the ability to zoom in and out of your clips to see you know more of your timeline or less of your timeline down at the bottom you've got these two little radio buttons and what that will let you do is it'll let you zoom out or zoom in to your clips that you're working on super handy especially later on when the the video starts to get longer and longer you're gonna want to zoom back uh, you can also click this gray area and move your timeline also handy. In the actual timeline itself, at the top, you've got this little blue playhead. And when you click and drag it, it will allow you to preview the clip that it is going over. All right, so it's previewing what that clip is all about. All right, uh, one thing that's important about the playhead is that if we want to actually play it as it normally would play um, at the proper speed, we can put the playhead to the start of the clip and press the space bar. And what that will do is preview the clip. All right, if there was another clip after it, it would keep on playing as well. But it allows us to preview our video to see how it's coming along. So let's get rid of this clip now. I'm gonna hit delete on the keyboard and we got rid of it. The very first clip we are going to add to actually start creating this video is we're going to go to Audi Enter and we're going to drop that one in to our video one. And it's going to say that the clip doesn't match the settings. We are going to keep the existing settings. And I want to explain to you why that message came up. You'll notice that this clip is actually too big for our canvas. All right, it's too big for the, the preview window. The reason is this clip was shot at a higher resolution than the previous clip. And the way that Premiere works is whatever video you drop in first, it will take those dimensions, those, that resolution of that video for every other video that gets put in. The problem with that is sometimes when you're shooting a video, you will have multiple video sources. So you might have some of it shot on a GoPro and some of it might be shot with a webcam and some might be screen recorded, you don't know. Um, all these different resolutions are going to come in at different sizes. So let me just zoom back a little bit so I can see the entire clip. I'm going to zoom back to about there. The way we can fix that is if we click the Audi Enter clip, you'll notice now that it is selected. It's got the white surrounding um, selection. Now we're going to go over to this top left corner here and we're going to go to Effect Controls. And what this will allow us to do is make changes to this clip specifically. And so inside here, you will see three folders, motion, opacity, and time remapping. We're going to click this little arrow next to motion. And this is actually a very powerful little window here. Uh, what we can do is we can change the position of that clip, which we're not going to do right now. And we can change the scale. The scale is what we're looking for here. The way that you do this, you just click and drag, and you notice that it works as a slider to scale the clip bigger or smaller. And I'm going to set it to 67. The way you can also do that is just by clicking and typing 67. That works too. All right, now we've got the clip at the right size, and if we preview it, we can see the, the entire clip in the preview here. All right. Now the cool thing about this uh, info or effects control area is you can do this on the fly. So as the video is playing, you can be adjusting the position and the scale and stuff and watching it as the video plays, which is kind of cool. Anyway, so that looks pretty good. <laughs> the next thing we're going to look at is color grading. 
color grading is a is a lesson in itself but if you want to make simple color corrections to your video and you want your stuff to look a little more cinematic a little more professional I guess we have tons and tons of um, effects that we can add to Premiere tons of things that we can add to make Premiere more have more effects or more transitions or whatever we want but for the sake of this tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to look up in the top right corner and this is actually a search window so you don't have to go through all the folders we are going to type Lumetri color all right Lumetri color and you notice that when you do that it searches these folders for the effect that matches and in this case there it is it's under color correction video effects color correction Lumetri color now I really like the way that Premiere works with um, its effects and, and just in general how it operates it's it's similar to Lego and you notice that this little block this little Lego block tells us that we can take this effect and we can drop it onto the clip that we want to affect so we just drop it on there when you do that you'll notice this little FX little green block shows up here in the timeline FX what that tells us is that the effect has been added to that clip and if we go over to the um, effects control area here you'll notice that nothing has changed on the clip but we now have a new menu at the bottom called Lumetri Color and Lumetri Color every time you add an effect it gets added in here and you can make the changes that you want to the clip so with Lumetri Color we're gonna go into the subfolder called Basic Correction and we got all sorts of things we can do to our clip here just like as if it's a, a photo in Photoshop in this case we're gonna just take the temperature and we're gonna slide it down a little bit so that photo be or that video becomes a little cooler alright we could go warmer as well but in this instance we're gonna go cooler instead of warmer right and you see I went minus 50 and what that does is it just cools the clip a little bit it's not as warm as it was before there's a lot of things we can do in here all right, and there's a lot of folders besides basic correction, but we'll get into that in a later video. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to just zoom out a little bit. We're going to look for the clip called Audi Heartbeat. Okay, so Heartbeat, not Heart Rate, Heartbeat. And we're going to drop it at the end of the first clip. So now what we have is this enter, this guy's coming in, the door closes, boom and it switches to this short clip of him getting I think they're called EKG pads put on his chest to measure his heart rate alright so those are getting attached now you notice that there's what we call a straight cut between these two clips basically one jumps from another directly alright first thing we want to do before we touch it we want to adjust the size of the heart uh, heart beat video so I'm gonna click it and I'm just gonna go up to scale here it should still be open I'm just gonna put 67 so that we know that the size matches you're only gonna to have to do this for the first couple because the rest will match after okay so you can see now they match in size but in this case let's say we didn't want the video to stop abruptly and jump directly into the next clip let's say we wanted to add a bit of a transition between so this is where video transitions comes in We've got a whole folder of those and we can add a lot more of those too. In this case we're going to look for the cross dissolve. All right, and a cross dissolve is simply one clip that blends into the next. All right, so once again you see this little block. Now this symbol here with the half white, half black tells us that it's a transition. You notice that the other one had a different symbol because it was an effect. So what we do with a transition when we see that symbol is we put it in between two clips all right and you see how that highlights when you drop it in between two clips what that will do is it will add a cross dissolve it might give you a warning we're just gonna hit OK and you notice that this cross dissolve gets added in between and now our clips don't just abruptly stop they blend from one into the other all right so you can see how that's happening it's blending from one to the other that's the point or the, that's why you would want to use a transition is if you wanted that sort of an effect. Next we're gonna look for the clip called Face Off. 
I'm going to drag and drop face off into our timeline. I'm going to zoom back a little more. There's face off right there. And it's kind of a silhouette of him looking towards the car. For this one, I'm going to show you how to trim videos because trimming is important. You're going to have to do that all the time. I'm going to zoom in a little on this one clip. You notice that wherever the playhead is, as soon as you start zooming, it will zoom in where the playhead is. Handy little feature. Now, to trim a clip is super easy. All right, you'll notice to the left of our timeline, we have all these tools. All right, some of them are really, really useful. Actually, they're all really useful. But the first one, the selection tool, is probably the one you're going to use the most. And what this will let you do is it will allow you to trim off either the front part of the clip or the back part of the clip. And all you got to do is click and drag, and you can start trimming it back. So for this clip, I'm going to actually trim it down to two seconds. All right, and you can see that next to the word duration. All right, you can see that below, duration. And we're going to get it to two seconds. I'm going to let go right there. Right, so I took a little over a second off this clip and you can see it's been shortened. Now the other cool thing you can do, there's a lot of things you can do. If you wanted to slice this clip up into smaller segments or maybe you want to take a part out that you screwed up on, you've got a razor tool and the razor tool you can just click and cut wherever you want it to cut. It's a handy little tool, you can do a lot of things with that. You also have this thing called the slip tool. Now slip tool is really useful. Um, when you have a a clip that's been trimmed down. Let's say it has to fit within this area. Well, what you can do with the slip tool is you can change where the clip starts and ends. All right, so for this clip, I'm actually using the slip tool and I want it to end with the light shining on, you'll see it at 302 at, in the preview. I want the light to shine. I want it to end that way. All right, and you see that that doesn't happen until the end of the clip right there. So 302. And uh, to do that, I had to slide it to the left a bit. And there we go. All right, that adds a neat effect. You'll see that it kind of spins around. That light comes on and it ends right there. It's kind of neat. All right, we're going to go fast for a couple here. We're going to put in eye twitch. Drop that in. We're going to put in face off two. Kind of drop that in. It's kind of a longer clip. I'm going to zoom back a bit. We're going to put in spin up, spin up, all right, and we're going to put in pan, pan, P-A-N, all right, and we're going to do pan two, and then we're going to do engine. All right, so engine. Now on engine, we're gonna pause right there. I'm gonna go over to the engine clip. There's something I want to talk about for this one. So put your playhead over the engine clip anywhere and zoom in a little bit. Okay, now for the engine clip, we wanna add an effect and it'll be a glow effect. And I, I wanna talk about this particular effect and there's a bunch like it. So up in the top right, I'm gonna put in glow. And what I want to do with this one is I want to actually put in an alpha glow. All right, I'm going to drop that onto the clip. Okay, we can adjust the amount of glow if we want. I'm going to maybe bring it up to 50 or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But you will notice, you will notice that in this case, when we added this effect, this bar right here turned red. Now the reason for that is because certain effects, certain things that you're going to do in Premiere will require you to render the result. All right, when it's yellow, it's able to show you, but when it's red, it means it has to be rendered first. And the way you can render out your video is by hitting the return key or the enter key on a PC, and that will render it out and you'll see that this whole bar becomes green after it's rendered. We're not going to do that right now, but that's the reason for that red bar. If you see it, that means it has to be rendered in order to see the result. I'm going to zoom out a little more. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I'm going to put in lights. Lights. There it is. And then I'm going to put in clench. Clench. Now look for the clench video, I want to show you something else. Zoom in on clench. 
I'm actually going to switch back to the selection tool. I don't want to stay on the slip tool. Um, for clench, we are going to add a Lumetri color adjustment. And I should have did this earlier, but I want to explain this now that we have some skin tone. Um, we're going to drop that Lumetri color onto the clench clip. You'll see the FX gets added. Now we're going to head over to our, our settings here under our controls. We're going to go into basic color correction. Now one thing that you may be familiar with if you um, are familiar with photography is white balance. And white balance is super important because a lot of times when you shoot your video, um, you're going to have some strange casts of light depending on where you shot it. So if you, photo, if you took your video in, let's say, uh, an area that has very yellow lighting, it's going to look really yellow. Uh, if you take it in a, an area that has really blue lighting, like a fluorescent room or something, it's going to look really cool. Um, and I don't mean cool as in looking, looking nice. I mean cool as in very blue. So what white balance allows us to do is it allows us to correct any sort of color casts that might be in our, in our footage. Um, so you'll see here white balance selector. If we click the little eyedropper, the way this works is you're supposed to click on a neutral um, gray area and what it'll do is adjust the color for everything else. So if I click somewhere, let's say up here in that neutral gray, it actually turns it way too warm in this case. So I'm going to go and click it again and maybe I'll get his skin this time. You notice that when I do that, whatever the tone of that area is, uh, is set to whether it's warm or cool it will adjust it so the rest of the image sort of becomes neutral I guess you can say so in this case we know there's a really strong blue tone across the entire clip and that's why when I click over here in sort of this grayish area it becomes much warmer alright if I click on the skin it goes back to sort of more of a cool uh, cool tone so if I was shooting a, a video of somebody under yellow lighting, I would try to find a part of the picture that had sort of a neutral gray or white area and use the white balance selector to get rid of any sort of cast across that image. All right, so I wanted to show that because it is important and it comes up quite a bit. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to do Audi back. Let's put that one in. Um, next is Audi zoom. We're going to put that in. And on the zoom video, you'll see that it's just a short clip of the car getting zoomed in on, just like that. All right. And what we could do for this clip is if we wanted this clip to become longer, let's say I said, oh, it's, it's way too short. I want it to become a little longer. What I could do is I can click this clip. I can go up to clip speed and duration. And I can either speed it up or slow it down. So if I wanted it 200% faster, basically two times faster, I'd put 200. If I want it to be um, two times longer, then my speed would be 50% and that will double the duration. You could also do things like reversing your speed. So like if you want the clip, let's say uh, somebody was blowing up a balloon, but you wanted the balloon to be blown up and then come back together, you can use reverse speed for that. Uh, but in this case, we're going to hit OK. It'll double the length. It tells us it's 50% uh, slower and the clip becomes twice as long. Now, one thing I want to mention about this. If you are true, shooting true slow motion, you're going to want to shoot with a camera that will take at least 60 frames per second. Because right now, what we did is we just kind of faked this slow motion effect. Actually, if I play it, you'll see it's kind of jumpy. That's because it doesn't have the extra frames to be nice and smooth. Uh, what, what Premiere does is it duplicates frames and kind, 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 kind of guesses on uh, how it should look. And that's not really the best way to do it. I'm going to zoom it out again. We're going to keep going and we're going to go fast now. So Audi spin, um, Audi front spin, Audi engine fast, Audi front spin again, Audi face off fast, Audi back 
fast. Back fast. I'm going to zoom out a little further. Body heart rate. Body eye blink. Audi zoom back. Zoom on a little further. And then Audi spin stop. And last but not least, Audi fade. All right, now there was a ton of clips there, and I just want to show you how that sequence looks. There are a bunch of short clips, and they're just going to kind of happen one after another, just like that until we get kind of to the end here where it just sort of slows down the engine stops in this case and we fade back to see the car okay so it was a lot of clips but uh, it was important obviously for it to look good in the end here so next what we're going to do is we're going to deal with audio and I apologize if the audio is loud and it kind of takes over me talking but I'm going to drop our audio in actually before I do that before I do that I want to kind of finish this off a little bit I'd like to actually get the whole entire sequence complete so I'm gonna place my playhead about here and let's say I want the Audi logo to appear at that point what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my folder of assets and I'm just gonna hit back and I'm gonna look for the logo folder and I'm gonna drop the Audi logo into my asset area of Premiere. You'll notice that it comes in, it's a PNG, it has a clear background, that's why it's a PNG. We could have just taken it and dropped it directly into our timeline, that works too, so I could just do that. All right, either way, but you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm putting it on the layer above because we want it to overlay the car. All right, you can see how that looks. It's overlaid on above the car, which is nice. All right, now let's say after the car disappears, we want the logo to stay on the screen for a little bit longer. Well, we could just extend it just like a clip, just like a video clip. We can extend it and it stays on the screen. Let's say we wanted it to have some text here to say something. All right, those are called titles. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make a title. So we'd go to File new legacy title and it's going to ask you the name of the title I'll just put uh, you know I'll leave it as title one it's fine I'm gonna hit OK and you'll notice that this opens in a whole entire window a separate window and we can just grab it from the corner and enlarge it and the way that this works it, it's a really complicated window but it's actually quite easy you're gonna take the text tool you're gonna to click kinda of where you want that text to start so I'm gonna put introducing the you'll notice that the text is really big so as I get to typing here I'm gonna run out of space but off to the right hand side you have all your text options so here's font size I'm gonna just drag that down so it becomes smaller and I'm also gonna pick a font that I like a little better here uh, let's see maybe that's a little too boring um, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Maybe I will just stick to Arial. Uh, no, I'm going to go back to Arial just for sake of time here. I'm not going to spend too much time looking for a fancy font. Go Arial Black. Okay, so introducing the new Audi R8. Okay, introducing the new Audi R8. And I'm clicking on the selection tool now. So I've clicked off the type tool. I'm clicking the selection tool. And what that will let me do is it'll let me position it sort of perfectly in place where I want it to go. Now you'll notice these margins. These are called safe zones. And you want to make sure that your text stays within the safe zone. So this area here. Those have to do with different size screens. If you're showing it on a television, whatever, you want to make sure that it doesn't extend out of these margins. For just extra effect, I'm going to go to my text tool. I'm just going to highlight the R8 part. And I'm going to fill it by clicking this little eyedropper. I'm going to fill it with the same color as that red right there. Kind of tie the, the design in a bit. So there, let's say I'm happy with that. I'm going to close this off in the top left corner. And you don't see anything happen. 
Well, what, where it goes is in your assets, you now have an asset called title one that you can drag and drop and you can put it into your timeline, right? So you see, as soon as the car disappears, boom, introducing the new Audi R8 comes up and then the end of the clip. All right, so pretty simple. Titles are fun. There's a lot you can do with them. I can show you another little trick. If you take a title or even your picture, in this case, the PNG, you select it, up in the top left where we got our effects controls, we have a position control. So it's an X and Y axis. So this one will adjust the up and down. And this one will adjust the left and right. All right, now the reason that's important is let's say I had a clip of me streaming myself playing a video game, for example, and I have a little video of me with my webcam and the main clip is the screen. Well, what I'd probably do is I'd have the streaming video like of my screen in the background. And then on the layer above, I would have that second clip shrunk down, scaled down and the position set to the corner. So therefore I can stack up my video and position it where I want it to go. You can do the same with the logos in this case and the text and all that good stuff. All right, next we are going to do our audio. And so I'm going to go through this and I'm going to look for where the motor turn or the car turns on, which is right here. The first time the car turns on right here, you see the wheels start spinning. So with audio, let's say we want the engine to roar, sort of turn on at that point. So I'm going to put my playhead right at the start of that clip. I might even want to zoom in just to make sure I got it perfect. I'm going to zoom into there right before that happens. And then I'm going to go over to my folder and I'm going to take the sound effect of the engine and I'm going to drag and drop it on the bottom part. This is audio channel one. Okay, it's down below and that's for audio. All right, and you can see now if I kind of scrub through it, you can hear the audio of the car revving up. I'm just going to mute that so that it doesn't uh, annoy me as I'm working on it. I'm also going to zoom back and I'm going to look for the point where the engine stops, which is right there. Okay, the engine stops right there. That's where I want this audio to stop. And you'll notice that you can trim it back just like a video clip and just stop it right where you want it. Okay, so there it is right there. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my music in and I'm going to take my music extreme action and I'm going to drag and drop it down in audio channel two. All right, you'll notice it's down below. I'm going to zoom back because it is a big clip and I'm going to line this one up with the end of the clip. So you notice that this takes up the duration of the entire clip from start to finish. And if I scrub through, you'll hear the sound. Okay, so that's the music. It doesn't sound like music because I'm scrubbing through. But now I'm going to unmute this audio one track. You'll notice now that everything should be in place. Everything is in place. Everything looks good. It might be a good time to save my project. Actually, I probably should have been doing that all along. But the final step after you've saved is you're going to want to export your clip. You're going to want to basically check it to see how the final product looks. And so what you would do is you go to File, Export, Media. And this is a scary looking window that comes up. It looks like it's crazy, like there's tons of options. But I'm going to show you it's quite easy actually. Uh, right now where it says QuickTime, we're going to change that to H.264 which is really just a fancy term for an MP4 file, H.264. The next thing you're going to look for is output name, and I'm going to click this, and it's basically where is it going to save. And I'm going to just choose my desktop, and I'm going to call it Audi. I'm going to hit Save. And now down below, if we wanted to queue it up, let's say we were going to export a lot of things at once, we would queue it up and do it all later on. But for right now, we just want this one, so we're going to hit Export and it's going to export just this one clip for us. And so here it goes. It goes fairly fast. Obviously the longer the clip is, the longer it's going to take, but you can see that this is fairly quick. And now we are exporting our final video in high definition. 
All right. So now at this point, we can close Premiere. Uh, if we're still working on it, we would leave it open. But now we've got our video clip on our desktop. So let's take a look at our final product. Here we go. Maybe turn down your earphones. I don't know how loud it's going to be. Okay, let's just go full screen as well. Here we go. Ready? Okay, so you can see that that looks pretty good. Now, if I wanted to make it better I would sync up the uh, transitions and all that to the audio you know so that it all looked really professional I might do some fade ins on the logo so it just doesn't just pop up uh, I'd have it fade in but anyways as you can see it's not that difficult those are the basics of Premiere and from here you can expand and and you know increase your skills by trying different effects and and seeing what different menus do all right, but that should be enough to get you started in the basics of Premiere and to start using the program. Anyways, I hope you found that useful. Till next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.